Every single person in this world has a story to share. Your story is your superpower and it's unique to you. In sharing it with the world, you can impact millions of people. If you keep it to yourself, you are doing the world a disservice. This is Della. I'm the host of Della's Voice. And I help you share your superpower with the world. Hello, hello, and thank you for uh, joining us on Della's Voice Sunday Live Talk Show. Let me just take, as usual, a moment of gratitude for this opportunity to have this platform where I can uh, meet with you every week and share in um, bringing you information, inspiration, and motivation for living your best life for your wellness, recovery, and change. Today is one of those um, really exciting days for me. I get to talk to this amazing lady who is going to just um, awe you with her story of um, what she's gone through to get to the point um, in her life where she can help other people through her passion and um, impacting this world in a positive way, one person at a time. A little bit about my guest today. We're talking about resilience, by the way. Resilience is your capacity uh, to really recover um, from difficulties. And so by building your resilience, uh, by building that capacity to recover from difficulties, um, that makes a big difference in how uh, we live our lives. So today, my guest is going to share with us what she did, her experience and her knowledge and how re she recovered. And trust me, she's recovered from a lot of difficulties. So a little bit about my fabulous guest today, Lisa um, Winston. Lisa is um, a resilience coach. She is... Um, a number one international best-selling author of her book, Your Turning Point. And uh, she'll have a lot to talk about that. And uh, stay tuned because she has, uh, she has a gift to give you through the show. Uh, she is an artist and a mom. She's actually um, a gifted vocalist. Why am I not surprised? Because uh, she, she's so fabulous. Her um, experience through... Um, extreme challenges. I mean, you know, her, her home was uh, burnt in a wildfire. She's gone through cancer uh, and um, neural Lyme disease. She's been able to uh, experience some, um, what would we call, what we would call <laughs> extreme uh, adversities and uh, she's risen above all of that. And she's here today to talk all about that. Today she shares um, her experience to help others. Um, and um, I'm so fortunate and so blessed to be able to speak to this um, amazing lady. So I wanna encourage you to please, if you're watching this right now, uh, share it with others because you just never know how this message could help another person. And um, also, leave us comments, um, your experiences, your questions, and I promise I will read them. So let's welcome my fabulous guest, Lisa Winston, on the show. Oh, my gosh. Della, I'm like emotional. I feel your energy. You're such a bright light, and you're such an inspiration. So thank you for having me here. I am deeply grateful and honored and blessed and hopefully I can help your listeners and viewers um, with some of their own challenges. Oh, 
Thank you. <laughs> You're so beautiful, Lisa. It's so beautiful. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much uh, for being here. Thank you uh, for accepting my invitation to be on the show. I truly appreciate it. Thank you for asking. Uh, okay. All right. Here we go. We're going to start this because I know we have a lot to talk about. First of all, uh, congratulations on your book, Your Turning Point which is international bestseller. And so in that book, um, what do you share with, um, with the reader? Well, it's crazy because that book took a long time to be birthed. You know, when I lost my house in the fire, I lost all my artwork, my music, because I've been a vocalist for 40 years. I lost all of the books that I tried to start. You know how we all sit there and type on our computer and we have them and we're like, we just can't get them going. And what I really got from the whole experience was that it's divine timing when it's time for something to come through when you have all the pieces you need for that particular project then it happens so when i met my life partner joe vitale um he initially was my coach my mentor and he helped me with this idea of a book and it was interesting because i wrote my book while my mother was dying <laughs> every morning i got up and i wrote this book and i literally was channeling information and it was really all about all the challenges that I went through my my entire life, I was very authentic and transparent. So oftentimes when we write something in a, sometimes we do a collaborative project or whatever, and we think, you know, my story is not important. Like nobody really cares yeah. about the stupid stuff I've been through. I just get over it, right? Yeah. So it's cathartic because our experiences are big to us. They're important to us. And so what I really share, and this is how I live my life, is number one, you know, challenges are here to refine us, not define us. And that's a big one because that means taking responsibility for your choices. It means you're not a victim of fate. It means that like when I had cancer and people called it my cancer, I said, it's not my cancer. It's the cancer. It was an experience. I don't own it. Um, I also really talk about intuition because that is the thing that got me where I am today. And so when we learn to trust that voice, that small voice, and we take those tiny little, you know, inspired hits, even if they seem like they're going nowhere or we don't understand why, when we know that we know we're supposed to take them, you know, that's the path that leads you where it is you're supposed to be. And so I give a lot of processes and, and I talk about my entire journey. And, and I also have a workbook that goes along with that. I didn't really promote that a whole lot, but that's on Amazon as well, that takes all the processes out of the book so you can actually just do the processes. They're very energetic. You know, they go back to the womb. <laughs> yes. The thing, so. Yes. Um, one of the things that I've learned is that uh, unless we learn to deal with the past and, um, you know, every single person I think uh, has stuff, right? That the, the baggages <laughs> of the past, unless we deal with them, there's no way we can, we can move on. And so that's such an important um, work that we need to be doing. Um, Lisa, I want to ask you your definition of resilience. Resilience means a lot of things to a lot of people. I've actually heard resilience is, you know, being tough and fighting your way through. But resilience in that definition is resistance, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, right? So resilience, I love to liken it. And that's why my logo on my coaching is a tree. It's, a, it's about adaptability, fluid, fluidity. It's about bending and flexing when stuff comes. You know, life is hard. And, you know, generally when stuff happens, we're like, no, we're screaming and we're, you know, hanging on for dear life. And so resilience really is having the ability to, first of all, accept what's going on because we don't want to shove it under the table. It's happening. Honor your feelings and your emotions because they are real. But then find strategies and ways to take action, inspired action, and move through in a much more positive, flowing kind of way because it makes things easier on your body. It makes the experience on the ride a lot easier as well. And you learn a lot of lessons that way too because you're actually connected and you're listening. Mm -hmm. I never really thought of resilience in terms of flexibility and pliability. I, I think that's fa fantastic the way you put that because uh, you're right. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of the tree in your logo and, um, you know, the, the wind blows and this tree and, and I mean, obviously different trees have different ways of, 
um, dealing with the wind, but there are some trees who, that, that are more flexible than other trees. And so they bend and then they go back and they're, they're totally fine. And you got some trees that break mm -hmm. in the wind because they're not as flexible and they're not as, <laughs> right? Interesting. And so I think that's great. I, that's what a great logo for this. Amazing, amazing. And I believe me, people, I'm still learning the lessons myself. Mm. You know, it, it's never ending. We're never perfect. We're never exactly where we need to be. We just get better, better, and better if we're committed to that journey. So, do you ever stop learning? No, I'm 62. Okay. I'll probably be, <laughs> however long I'm here, I will be learning. I, I, I didn't hear. It. Did you just tell us your age? Yeah. Oh. 62. <laughs> Don't ask me how I got here. <laughs> You're fabulous. You're fabulous. <laughs> so we're talking today um, four ways creativity helps you build um, resilience. Now, this to me is really, really interesting. And I can't wait for us to, to really dive into this. And so I was wondering... Um, what was the first turning point for you? Mm. Well, you and I were speaking before the interview, and the very first thing that really was a big wake-up call, the big universal two-by-four, was losing my home to wildfire and then being diagnosed with breast cancer two months later. Oh. That was the big, hey, you who, you know, I, I listen, but I tend to be stubborn, and so the divine spirit, whatever you want to call it, the universe you know, needs to get my ten attention in a bigger way. <laughs> so that was a big turning point. So what was it um, that you needed to pay attention to? Well, I was in, I had had two very toxic marriages, one to a narcissist sociopath where I had a daughter. And I was in a 14 year relationship that was also very toxic. And I was very unhappy. But in the midst of that relationship, I started practicing Qigong and reading Eckhart Tolle and you know, Wayne Dyer and all these things were calling to me. I was always spiritual, but never to that level. I, I was really unhappy. So, I, you know, when we're unhappy, we tend to get on our knees, pray, yeah. do it right, do whatever I we know. have to do to yeah. learn. Yeah. And so it was really a confirmation. The, the interesting thing is, is that before the fire, Della, I was actually, Eckhart Tolle talks about dying to self, which is, you know, dying to who you are, the materialistic things, your expectations. It's really just letting go. It's about letting go and surrendering. And so I had asked, my prayer was a year before the fire, spirit helped me die to self before I die. And with that, everything changed. And if you understand that, you know, it's not a punishment. I mean, in reality, I had so many blessings and gifts come from that experience. Plus I was in a place where I could make a better decision to not stay in that relationship and move in a different direction. So I was listening. I was listening. I wasn't where I am now consciously, but I was conscious enough to know, you know, with my, my connection that something was telling me to move in a different direction. So here you are, you had the fire burn your house in while it was happening, what was what was going on in your head? Like, what were you telling yourself while it was happening? Well, it's weird because it was a weird experience. As a matter of fact, I just wrote about this in Authority Magazine. Um, and I'll be published in a few days. But it, I talked about how, you know, I, again, I, I wanted to move in a different direction. I wasn't sure where I was going. So Part of me was in disbelief when I went back to the house and there was nothing left and we had 10 minutes to get out. It was a very traumatic experience. And my daughter had lost her house four years previous with her dad in Cedar oh. in San Diego. So it was a lot of trauma. <laughs> but because, like I said, we had a news channel follow us, you know, from the fires through the, the cancer and everything. And um, because it, it was hard, because when I got the diagnosis of, of cancer, it was a terrifying slap in the face. I mean, you just don't think it's gonna to happen to you. And then you don't really know if you're gonna die or not from it, right? So I had this old mentality about that and that I have a different mentality now and you can read about it in that story in Authority Magazine. Um, but was, what was interesting is that because I had to rebuild my life, I mean, we had to move three or four times in a period of three weeks. I had to you know, get my child back to school um, we had to rebuild the house. There were a lot of things going on. And I had to go for treatment, surgery, radiation, et cetera, for treatment. And I was so busy doing from day to day, from moment to moment, that it 
it really put me in a state of present moment living present moment awareness one day at a time because I didn't have all my comforts, you know, I didn't have my normal things around me. So in reality, it sounds kind of weird, but it propelled me into a state of deeper spiritual connection. And I didn't feel I was being punished. I mean, don't get me wrong. I suffered and I was angry at times and I was scared, you know, but um, there were just too many things happening that were like an answer to the prayer. So. so interesting, right? This is so interesting. And in retrospect, you look back and you think, do you think, um, had had that not happened to you, had the fire not happened, had the cancer not happened, would you have, I mean, it's a weird question, would you <laughs> have the turning point you did? How well, I, mean, I wouldn't have moved in the direction I went. I, because when you are faced with anything, the loss of your life is really the loss of your identity. It's a very weird thing to go through because everything you had, you can't get back. <laughs> so you have to deal with that. And then cancer itself is, am I going to live or am I going to die? So that wakes you up. That's like, a, again, another slap across the head. And so it was a wake up call. And I think without it, I probably would have I really believe that if I wouldn't have left that 14 year relationship, I probably would have gotten cancer in a bigger way and died. That's what I always said. Oh, felt like, you. Yeah. you know, just answering the call of, I'm not really sure where I'm supposed to go, but I'm not supposed to stay here much longer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so I got the nudge. Yeah. How, how do you, how do you see that? How do you see the stresses of, um, you know, that, that goes on around you? I mean, a lot of people live in that lifestyle, you know, they, for years and years of, agony and hatred and anger and frustration and then you 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 know and a lot of people are really oblivious to the to this and I want you to please explain this because you know it so well how does that affect you oh boy that creates disease I mean there are people who self-medicate they drink they do drugs you know they do lots of things to make themselves feel better however <laughs> poor me <laughs> who is an intuitive, empath, sensitive, I can't drink, can't do drugs, can't, I mean, everything affects me, right? Everybody's energy, everything. And so I don't really have a way to self-medicate. And so I was so miserable and so unhappy and felt so ill. And if you look at my pictures, you know, 10, 15 years ago, I look older than I am now. There was no sparkle in my eyes. My skin was dead. I felt dead inside. I was a shell of a human being. So, you know, that's... Um, that's it. I mean, I was not who I, and, and I really had a, my whole life I had a, a feeling that I was special and I had, you know, been a born again Christian. I had gone the whole religious route, right? And I wasn't really finding what it was that I wanted, but I felt this connection to God, the universe, spirit. And so that propelled me forward. And I got just unhappy enough <laughs> to start reaching out because I didn't know where else to go, go to the big guy for help because the health challenges, and I've had those follow me throughout my whole life, are really, uh, some of it is like I had Lyme disease and didn't know it until I was diagnosed two years ago and really collapsed. But I've had my body for my whole life. So that has created a lot of symptoms and a lot of fear. I believe some of it's ancestral, some of it is karmic, some of it is just because I came in a very anxious, fearful individual. But it really does mess up your body. And you're so focused on the fear and you're so focused on stress and anger that you damage your body, you, you mess up your energy, you close off your life force. And so I think the biggest thing I'd like to do is bring awareness to people of feeling in. What does your body feel? Where is your resistance? You know, what are you resisting? And then start playing with that and moving your focus in a different direction so you can get healthier and have more flow. Mm. Yeah. Um, what are, what are some resistance I want to say that people have uh, in um, in working out their issues uh, when they? <laughs> I'm sure you've met a lot of people who resist. Yeah, me too. <laughs> um, resistance shows up in lots of ways. You know, we ignore, we shove things under the rug, we get angry. Like I used to have outbursts of anger. I mean, I had a lot of things happen to me. I like to say life's, life's happening for me. But back then I felt like I was a victim. Things were happening to me. And I was, I was angry. I was enraged. I wasn't angry. And it would show up in little ways. It would bubble to the surface, you know, and then we just let it go and we go on. 
Or a lot of times we sabotage, even if we go to therapy or we try to get somebody to help us. You know, um, I remember after the fires, I went to a therapist briefly and I brought up family issues. And in one session after I left, I was so ill for about three weeks, I didn't go back. So this is again, where you get to feel into your body. Some of it's timing. Some of it is, you know, what am I really shoving under the rug? rug? What am I sa- uh, sabotaging, you know, sabotaging myself, my, my success, my business, my career, my happiness, whatever it is. So it's very um, divisive. It's very subtle. And if we aren't aware and we're just off living our lives like a lot of people do, then all these patterns and behaviors and habits come up. You know, we just think they're part of life. Hmm. But they're really the body, spirit, the, your energy trying to knock on that door and say, hey, something's off. Yes. Yeah. And if you're lucky, you see it, don't you? Um I had I had this a similar experience, uh, Lisa. You know, and I was I wasn't listening for a long time, and then all of a sudden, you said "universal two by four. That was so cute, and it's so true. Uh, I, I literally got hit, and it was like my wake up call. Start yeah. looking, really, like, and and realize that you know you're wasting your time, you're wasting your life on these pity things. Well, I really feel too that when we have a bigger calling. A lot of us are afraid to step into that. We know it at a deep level, right? You knew that you were here for a purpose, a greater purpose. We we feel called to do something, but we're terrified from past experiences or we don't like being visible or we're afraid we're going to get mocked or judged or criticized or whatever that limiting belief or habit is. And so we don't tend to follow that path. And so that's why it's really important to listen to those two by fours and listen to your intuition. Now, some people are not going to want to do that. They're going to have to wait for the universal two by four, right? Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. that's it's, it's true. It, it's true, and uh, if you're lucky, the two by four is just going to ever so so lightly, <laughs> yeah, hit you and not just knock you down. <laughs> um, I want to say hello to uh, everybody who's watching us, and I want to encourage you to please drop us a comment because if you don't write a comment, I won't see you, so I won't be able to mention your name. But for now, for um, people who have been generous to leave us comments, uh, Frida, uh, uh, I've got Paymon, and I've got Mohammed Arif. And Mohammed says, anger is natural. How can we overcome this? Well, that's a great question. I don't think we can overcome anger. And I don't think we can necessarily overcome a lot of things. There is there is anger that eats away at the body, which I believe Louise Hay said, you know, cancer is caused by anger and things that eat away at the body, resentment, things that really you hold them in your organs, right? So anger at a certain time about certain things is okay. There's this righteous anger, right? But it's not the kind of anger where you're immersed in it and you're shoving it down. You're just talking about a situation that maybe is unfair or needs to be resolved, but you're not taking it necessarily per- personally, right? You're just you're just irritated by it or, or whatever. So again, our emotions, and if you ever watched uh, Esther Hicks, Abraham, she talks about the levels, right, of, of our emotions. Like if you're a certain thing, but you're up on the scale of anger, then you're still moving up the scale. You're just not at the top yet. So again, we, we don't want to suppress any emotion. We don't want to suppress anything. We want to look at it, certainly, And we want to try to raise our vibrations above that and even do tapping or work with somebody. I'm doing a lot of breath work with somebody who is a a Vedic astrologer and and they do amazing work Um, for any trauma, because I have a lot of trauma work that I'm doing right now. Also, so again, anger can be used in uh, proactively if you're careful with it. But again, most of us fly off the handle and then we lose it. And then anger is just a pointless waste of energy. And remember, whoever you're angry at is getting depleted of their energy when you're talking about them. And any situation that comes back to you is depleting your energy as well, if it's from an angry person. So it's this management of our energy that's super important. That's that's so important. And so it's a great question. And um, I uh, I was lucky to interview Dr. Joe Vitale. And, um, you know, he (laughs) you know him. Do you know him? Yes. <laughs> and he, he, you know, he talks about um, Ho'oponopono and, um, you know, those four phrases. Um, and 
they are so helpful in changing your vibration and so that's a that's a great tool as well um i'm sure I'm I'm sure if you know Dr. Joe Vitale, Lisa, you've heard of that too. <laughs> yeah, well, he practices it every day and so do I. Sometimes I, if I can't sleep at night, I, I do it. But what I love about Ho'oponopono, because I've done different forgiveness techniques like a lot of people, I'm always trying to understand or figure that out because, you know, somebody's done you wrong in a big way and sometimes you want revenge or you, you know, you, know, you just want something bad to happen to them because they're horrible people. But if you remember, what's that saying um, that Buddha says, you know, if you're holding a hot coal in your hand, it's actually burning you and not the other person if you hold yes. on to anger. And so with Ho'oponopono, it's not about forgiving anyone or any situation. It's about getting clear and clean about your perceptions with the universe, because once you clear yourself, everything on the outside clears. Oh. So it's a beautiful, again, it's that taking responsibility for yourself. It's really about, I mean, everything from law of attraction standpoint, right? comes from inside of us comes from us yeah yeah uh thank you for that um it's beautiful before we actually move into the four ways creativity yeah. builds um, resilience you mentioned something that i'd like to go back to and you said you came into this world um <laughs> with a lot of uh, anxiety and i i want to i'm curious about that a little bit do you mind yeah i'm curious about it too no <laughs> My mother um, passed three years ago and I was with her while she was dying of breast cancer. And we talked a lot. And, we, and I, from what I understand is that I was a very wanted child. I was in the middle of three, but that I was incredibly difficult. I came onto the planet. I needed a lot of attention. I was hyper. I was anxious. I cried all the time and they were just really tired of me, you know? And so they didn't not love me. They loved me, but I got squashed early on. And I felt like nobody saw me, no one heard me. I was very playful and I'd be told to stop it or shut up or knock it off, you know, whatever. So I felt like my light was really squelched early on. And I think the fear came with me. I'm almost positive it came from whatever I had before, because whether you believe in past lives or not, I've done work around that too. And I know for myself vividly <laughs> that there have been some bad things that happened to me way back when. And so it was almost like I came in going, no, nah, I don't want to do this again, you know, and then I was placed with people who loved me, but they didn't know about sensitive children. I mean, back in the 50s and 60s, nobody really talked about any of that. Right. So <laughs> that was the beginning of my journey. And, and then I had a lot of bad things happen to me throughout my whole entire life. And I think because the fear really does attract certain things to you. But then again, there are lessons. So it kind of goes in hand in hand. Um, what do you think you came here for? You know, we all have these ideas in our head that we are here to do something greater, right? And it's great to follow that path. But I was just thinking the other day, because I was like, I haven't seen my daughter in almost two years. And sorry, I'm having a hot flash. <laughs> and, um, and I was thinking, gosh, I hope I don't pass away before I get to see her. You know, and there's so much that I want to do. I started my art again. I'm opening my business in a different way. But the thing is, is that we don't understand the divine. We don't know the real plan for our life. And sometimes if we go early, we've completed whatever it is. We came here to complete whatever is in our contract that we don't remember. <laughs> We're done with it. So that's why it's really great to go with a feeling if you're inspired inside and you know that you want to help other people, but to jump into whatever it is that you're called to in the moment. Like I've been coaching and, you know, I was singing for 40 years and now I'm making these incredible paintings, which I was inspired to do. I mean, crazy inspired. Like I knew that I knew and I went out and spent a lot of money <laughs> and I started doing it. And um, we really need to stay in the moment, stay in the moment, doing what we're called to do now and not worrying so much about the future. We can do future gratitude and, you know, play the game and, and all that and hope for a long life. But we don't know. And again, what do we have, Della? We have one moment at a time. I mean, in reality, I could just keel over here on this <laughs> on this call and I don't have any control over that. Mm -hmm. So I think that we have to remember stay in the present moment. And that's really hard to do. It's really interesting that you mentioned that because the fears, right? And, and I mean, with, for any for any parent, I think. Uh, the biggest fear is something happens to their kids and um, you know, that, that is also my biggest fear. And so every time my 19-year-old my leaves the house, um, 
you know, I, 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 I feel so, <laughs> I, I feel, I feel so tense and I want to keep him. If I, if I could just keep him at home and not let him leave the house. Um, but then I have to realize that I have to let go. And so one thing that has helped me a lot is that I keep reminding myself that if I believe that there's a higher power that protects me, mm -hmm. then who am I to think that I need to protect him? And so that's the only thing that, that helps me go on with my life, I tell you. But that's hard. My daughter lives in Oregon. And I haven't seen her in almost two years. And I can't, you know, with COVID and everything, we're being careful. And um, and she was in a car accident a couple of years ago where the driver totaled her car and almost hit her in the driver's side and she would have been killed. And the thing is, is that we have to also realize that our children are not ours. They're on loan, right? They're also adults. They make their own decisions and they have their own journey. And I'm not sitting here telling you that's easy because there are days I, I miss my daughter and I cry because I love her with all my heart and she's having some struggles and I, it breaks your heart as a mother or parent that that happens to your kids. But again, they, they made a contract also. This, I have so many people remind me of this. Lisa, your, your child made a contract when they came here to do what they're doing, to go through what they're going through. And you brought them in, you were the channel, but you have no control of your own life. Or your child's life so you really have to trust like you said trust i pray i i you know i pray i do all kinds of things every night before i go to bed i just pray that you know she can stay safe and uh, protected and all that and that's but the thing is is we also don't want to bring um negativity in right if if we're really scared and we're praying for a lot of protection then it's almost like a prayer for you know oh gosh something bad's um, gonna happen yeah law of attraction right Right. We should start to envision. I also do um, something I'll tell your viewers about, and probably a lot of people do it already, but it's called future gratitude. Future gratitude. Have you done it? I, I, I love it. I've heard of it. I, I haven't done it. Tell me. It, it is amazing. I know somebody who went from zero to a seven figure art business by doing future gratitude. She and I were in a media course together. And she did 15 books of future gratitude. So I have a journal over there every day. And even when you don't feel it, you write, I am so happy and grateful, you know, that my daughter is healthy and her business is flourishing and she is happy. And so, you know, so you, you write over and over and over in this book, this journal, how, however many times a day you want to, you know, all the things that you, that have already happened, like they've already happened and they're amazing and you're giving gratitude for it. Like it's already done. And I have to tell you, it is one of the most powerful things. Gratitude is powerful in and of itself, but that process is incredibly powerful for people to do. So I suggest if you're not doing it, and like I said, if you sit down in the first week, you're going, yeah, I'm really grateful. Like you're not going to feel it. But when you, even like Della, when you do gratitude, right, if you're not feeling it, it starts to build momentum Yes, yeah. and things start to open up for me. Yeah. Sometimes you just have to force yourself to do it and start. And, and so true. So so to clarify, future gratitude is you you envision your ideal um, ideal life or for whomever you love and for yourself as well. That's already happened, and um, you you pay gratitude for that as if it's already happened. So that, yes. that would be powerful. So I'm going to start adding that to my morning routine. Oh, uh, be, you'll see a big difference. It's amazing. <laughs> so Mohammed has a, a lot of questions. He's, okay. uh, yeah, he's okay. a very he's a very curious um, soul. He's asking about Ho Pono Pono, and I. Um, I think the best way for you to get more um, information on Ho'oponopono is just to Google Ho'oponopono and Dr. Joe Vitale. Oh, yeah. Yep. He can help you. He's, He's got so many guy. books. Add zero. Oh, there are so many amazing books that yeah. I, I think a lot of people, it's just really hard because even for me, it was hard to grasp the concept of not like some people say, well, can I heal this illness if I you know, do this process? And I'm like, there's no guarantees when you do it that anything is going to change. It is specifically for you to get back to the point of zero, which is God, the, the zero point. There's nothing on the board. And so it really is about you cleaning and clearing your perceptions. Like if you're angry with somebody or they did something, you have a lot of conversations in your head, right? That SOB, you know, I hope they get run over by a truck or whatever it is. That's your perception about that person. Because first of all, you don't even really know. Uh, there's a process. 
bring me back if I forget because I have senior moments. <laughs> but there's this great course. Oh God, thank God. You know, that, that you can do, like when, when you're in a situation that's really heated and you're really angry, there's this, this uh, process that's like you're a, you're a camera instead of a person. So you can either go back and see the situation that was difficult after the fact, or if you practice this process, you can try to do it when you're in the moment. But a camera, when it's viewing something, it has no perspective, it has no emotion. It, it, it sees what's really happening behind the lens. That's all, there's no embellishment, there's no nothing, there's no story, there's nothing. And so if you practice being a camera and looking from that perspective at what really just happened without your idea or their angle or any story, then it takes away that emotional charge. It stops the storytelling. It stops that whole process. And boy, if I would have known about that earlier, I would have done it. Um, and that's kind of like Ho'oponopono. It's kind of like spirit is in charge, right? Spirit knows the bigger picture. We don't. Spirit understands the bigger picture. And it really is about what's my concept? What's my perception? What's my incorrect emotion, belief, story, whatever it is, help me clear that, get me clear. Because when that starts to clear, everything starts to clear. Yes. But I suggest reading about it because it takes a while sometimes to grasp the concept. So I would get one of Joe's books at zero or, you know, zero limits or any of those. And so I, I'm going to, I'm going to do some shameless uh, self uh, <laughs> Please do promotion here. Mohammed. I've interviewed Dr. Vitali. <laughs> I would really love for you to go watch that uh, interview I did with Dr. Vitali, where he explains really simple, simply what Ho'oponopono is all about. Um, and, uh, and then let me know what you think. Okay. He also wants a simple explanation of the law of attraction. Can you well, give for, me that? I don't know. I mean, very again, Joe's the law of attraction expert, but yeah. law of attraction to me is just that our, we are energy beings. We are energy at our core. When I practice Qigong, we are told to envision a column of energy going from top to bottom, right? That's how we're connected. And so in reality, Tell me what I was just talking about again. See your moment. <laughs> no, that this is explaining uh, law of attraction very right, simply. Right. Thank you. So whatever your vibration is, your dominant vibration, and that's why I teach how to raise your vibrations, right? And it's, sometimes it's difficult. You have to be committed to the process. But whatever your dominant vibration is, if you, and, and let me give you an example. When I was married, when I was within that 14-year relationship, my partner was angry, toxic, critical, negative. I, you know, and this is where I was at. I went from one toxic to the next toxic. That was my pattern for them. And we went to a restaurant. This happened actually many times, but we were driving to a restaurant in San Diego. And I remember this guy riding our rear end in the car and like beeping the horn and everything else. And then of course my partner who didn't seem angry, just got angry and he started agging the guy on. The guy pulled us over, got out of the car, almost broke my windshield. And then after that was over, we went to a restaurant in La Jolla. Nice place. You think you'd have nice people with civil manners and all that. And at the end of dinner, we came out, waited at ballet for our car. While we were standing there, somebody came up to my partner, my then partner, and started punching him for no reason. And then I got in the middle of it because I was angry and I got hit too. So if you look at all that, even if like my, my past partner, you know, he showed up, he would seem very calm, very normal, very nice, but he was attracting all of this crap to him. You know, Joe always says, if you expect crap, that's what you get, right? Yes. So when you start seeing what situations like that in your own life, who's around you, what are the situations that are happening in your life? Who are the people that are in your life? What are you attracting? That is a law of attraction, your vibration, your dominant vibration. That's including your thoughts, your emotions, your beliefs, all that will attract to you what it is that you believe in and what you are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and so you live like that until one day you get hit by two by four and you wake up. Or several. <laughs> like <me. laughs> yeah. And, and you want to change that all. Okay. So we need to like get moving because okay. I don't want to miss this. Um, okay. So four ways creativity builds resilience. Yes. Let me move back again because my head's getting cut off again. So I'll move back here. Okay. First of all, one of the biggest things is what I just talked about, raising your vibrations 
when I was sick and, and during cancer somewhat, but more especially when I was going through the neurolyme disease, you know, I was very dark for about a month. I wanted to give up my faith. I felt like I was dying. I was, I was in a way. Um, I was very angry and I was like, I can't believe this is happening again. And this is after all the stuff I've been through writing my book and, you know, attracting Joe and all this other stuff. And I came to a point where I thought, you know what? I have a vision and a goal. So I got to work. Now this is where you can, this is, this is really the difference between two different human beings, right? Somebody who stays where they are or somebody who's like, I'm struggling like crazy, but I'm going to get off my rump and I'm going to figure out what to do. Mm -hmm. So in that period of time, you know, I danced around to Jason Mraz, even I couldn't see I had neuro like I couldn't see drive my spatial was off. I thought I was going to be brain damaged for life. So I was scared. But I got up, I, I danced to Jason Mraz, I painted pictures and some of them were angry, but I was expressing I put sticky notes on post its all over our apartment on the ceilings, the walls, I got up on my bed as sick as a dog. And I had a big microphone with people on the wall in front of me because I remembered that I was a speaker and I was still moving in that direction. And so I was giving my, my mind and my body the uh, remembrance that, Hey, you have a goal. You have a, a, a mission here. And so I got up and I would pretend and call, record myself and talk to people like that. So I did, I did Qigong. I did Donna Eden's met energy medicine. I literally did everything you can imagine to raise my vibes, even if it was just a squeak, because again, you have to get up the scale. And as I started doing that, was the journey easy? Oh no, not for a long, long time. But because I was committed, it, it amps up your vibes. It changes your mind. Even when you do affirmations and stuff, I'm telling you, people don't believe in those a lot of times. But if you have an affirmation that I'm vibrant and healthy or whatever it is, if you stick with those things, it really does start to sh create a shift. So raising your vibrations, I think, is one of the most important things that you can do. That's number one. Um, so that's that's one way for sure. And I wanted to um, go there for a moment because you, you you said you you went through this after all of that, like after <laughs> after so much, and then writing your book. So you 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 already thought that you had your turning points and you had your lessons learned, and then there's this thing that hits you. And um, what do you think you needed to learn from this? again. Oh boy. Well, in hindsight, um, I think some of it was karmic. I mean, Joe was going through a horrific abusive two, it's, all, it's been almost three year divorce. Um, and that was unexpected for us because he's very kind and generous and wanted to give away the farm and, you know, loved his ex-wife, but he just didn't want to be married anymore. And um, also, so we had that. And then of course we couldn't speak. I couldn't go anywhere for a year. So he had to take care of me. And so, and then COVID hit. So, so that it was just like one thing on top. And then Joe lost a lot of people that died and his, you know, friends and his dad and all these things were happening. And so I thought some of it was probably karmic because when we came together, some crazy high energy, high vibe things happened. And so sometimes you have to kind of clear, you know, all that old stuff out. But part of me also was still in resistance. You know, uh, surrender is a big thing and resistance is huge too. Like a lot of times we're like, yeah, I surrender. I'm surrendering. I'm letting go. But you can feel when a situation happens that there are layers of resistance. Surrender is, is not an easy thing to do. And when you do it, usually you do it a little bit at a time, but I could still feel in my body that I had resistance. I had fear. I had fear around death. I had all these things that, you know, I, to a certain degree, shoved down and didn't really address. And so it was the universe again. Okay, you want to suffer? Let's suffer a little bit more. <laughs> and let's see if you can start getting to what it is that's, you know, the, the real issue, clearing yourself. And so again, we're all um, imperfect. We're perfectly imperfect. And sometimes we need an extra reminder. But if you're in denial about what's going on, or you think you have it all going on and all together, guess again. You know, you can feel the resistance, you know, your patterns. And when they come up, you need to go, oops, you know, if I don't clear that out. Something's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Um, okay. So we talked about um, raising your vibration as a way to build resilience. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what's next? Manage your mindset. Manage your mindset. Mindset. You know, I'm doing, I'm teaching people uh, about the creativity and about art and about opening your vibrations. And my course is all about really raising your vibrations, using your intuition and all that. 
But the piece that keeps coming up with clients is that they still have unresolved trauma or issues or unhappiness or whatever. And so what we want to do is we don't want to focus there solely because if we do that, right, it's the end of the world. We're screwed up and we're not going to be able to get out. Well, we're never going to have it 100 percent correct. Manage your mindset. Make the commitment to do something to, to do a pattern interrupt, to shift things. I do tapping. Joe does a lot of tapping, too. Tapping is one of the most powerful things ever. I've, I've been starting to use a technique that's called alternate breathing. Look at, Just look it up. Go online. Because it really calms the nervous system. And it gets you in a different space. I mean, if you're a runaway train like I was with fear and anxiety, then your mind's going all over the place and you're in fear, probably. And your body can't heal when you're in fear. So also just, again, question your beliefs that come up. You know, if you're saying to yourself that I'm not worthy, I don't deserve this or whatever, you need to sit down and look at that and say, questioning is like one of the most powerful things you can do, even as a coach, right? We don't have all the answers. We need our people, our clients to, to come to some kind of conclusion. And so ask yourself, is this true? Is this really true? And, and nine times out of 10, you'll find that it's not true. Okay. So again, it's, it's a practice. It's a commitment. And I know it seems like a lot, but it can be little tiny baby steps, yes. little things you do every day in your toolkit. Oh. Right? oh my gosh, managing your mindset is so big, so big, so big, oh, so big, and it's it's a lifetime work. Yeah, it is. <laughs> right <from> bad news. <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and you can't hire someone else to do it. No, <laughs> we gotta no. do it. <laughs> you can hire, you can work with a coach that makes it a lot easier though that's for sure that's for sure yes. um well i was asking do you mean to reprogram your mind is that what you mean yeah you can reprogram your mind but you also um even just need to calm your mind like i said i call it pattern interrupt you need something to stop the old habits and patterns you know a lot of times we'll do that that old technique where somebody will put a rubber band around their wrist and it seems silly right yeah. but when we have a thought it the thing is is when you manage your mindset and you're interrupting your old patterns, you, again, this is the, the awareness practice, the self-awareness practice. And it all comes down to, you know, what am I feeling in my body? Where do I feel resistance? What is triggering me? What happened right before I got triggered? Um, you know, what are these beliefs that I'm telling myself? Because our minds are on a loop, right? We, Your mind does not know the universal mind. Your mind knows what it's gone through and that's it. It's on a loop. So it's always coming back around. And so a lot of times we're walking through our days mindlessly going, I, I stink, I, I'm lousy, I can't create anything, everybody hates me, and, and nothing works out for me. So when you find that you're doing those things, you need to, you know, flick yourself, yeah. do a rubber band, do something and say, hey, eject, stop it, just stop. Because your mind is in control. Yes. <laughs> and it's a matter of you, and again, it's not an easy process, but it's doable. It's doable. And if you don't do anything about it, then what? Then you're going to be on the same course you've been on. Yes, nothing changed. Like my friend, uh, she, she likes to ask people, how's that working out for you? Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great question. Yeah, that's yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, so we talked about uh, raising, changing or raising your vibration. Next, uh, managing your mindset. Yeah. What's the third one? doing what you love. And this is where the creativity piece comes mm. in. Gosh, guys, I am a creative. Now, there are many of you out, going, out there going, I'm not creative at all. I don't like art. I don't like, yeah, I like music or whatever. Creativity doesn't have to be art. <laughs> creativity is, you know, using that God-given part of you that wants to do something. We are all co-creators at the core. You can go garden. You can uh, create a, a an app, you know, whatever it is that you love to do. I happen to love music and I happen to love art. So, when you're doing something, doing what you love is doing something mindlessly. It literally transforms you. When I do my art classes, it's so funny to watch all these adults, right? I have this idea we're going to do two pieces, two eight by tens, or maybe three, and the class is going to be an hour and a half. Well, the first class was almost three hours. Everybody's like, let's do four and five of these. It's so much fun. They were like little kids. They lit up. It raised their vibes. So, you know, I mean just doing stuff that you love. I mean, look at this stuff, you guys. I'm just going to, this, you know, just doing stuff that turns you on and lights you up. Oh, yesterday. that's so beautiful. I don't know. Anyway, this is a bigger one. That's beautiful. So, thank you. And so when you're creating things you love and you're doing, like for me, the art is like, oh my God, 
like I'm not even in control. I do techniques and then something happens. The universe takes over. I channel these. I, I pray over them. So what lights you up? What turns you on? What could you do for hours and hours and hours and not stop doing? I used to love to read for hours until I actually became an adult and I had responsibilities. <laughs> you know, so creativity is like oxygen, I say. Yeah. yeah. It brings life to your cells and your body and it shifts everything. And it brings money. I it's another talk I'm doing, wealth without resistance. It brings money in because you're not focused on money. Yeah. Money. Yeah. That's just a, a side effect. Right. Um, so, but I wanted to ask you, Lisa, for those people who think oh, I'm not creative, I don't have a creative bone in my body. I, you know, how could they discover? Um, is there is there something you can suggest for them to discover what their their creative side is? Well, I did that for years. I had that book. I can't remember what it's called. What color is your umbrella or parachute or something like that? You know, and I was always trying to figure out what what is it I love. And the crazy thing is, is that I've been a creative and artist. I've been doing art for 40, 50 years. I've been singing. But I always thought, I can't make money doing that, what I love. Not really. Musicians aren't paid very well. Artists, you can't sell your artwork. So look at number one who you are at your core. What are your God-given gifts? What are the things you know you're good at? Um, again, my brother's a computer. Uh, you know, he's developed games and all kinds of stuff. I don't have like a technical bone in my body. Like that side of my brain doesn't work. So whatever it is that you- And yet you're here. Yeah, well, because I finally accept it that what I do can bring money in. It brings joy to people. It brings joy to me. Once you align with what you love to do and it brings joy to you, and let it go with that, with no expectations, right? Things start to move. So who are you at the core? The, the very core. What do you love to do? What turns you on? And then look at your beliefs around, because you're going to say, well, I really love to do this, but you're going to go. I, I know a girl, uh, a woman, Ann Timpany, who I uh, interviewed years ago on a summit, and she's a joy coach. And she said, the funny thing is, is that she always loved to laugh, and she loved being in joy. And she thought, well, that's stupid. I can't make money doing that or help people. Well, she's a joy coach and she's pretty well known. So ask yourself, why are you stopping yourself in that regard? What are your thoughts and beliefs around that situation? Yeah. Write them down yeah. and explore. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. Um, the fourth, the last. Yeah. Well, I have so many. Um, let's see what I want to talk to, about, to you about. Um, oh, something else I want to bring up too, real quick. Um, Hold this thought for me. I want to talk okay. about intuition and connection, yeah. but also look for what's going right in your life and what's good in your life. When I was really sick and I was complaining about all the things in my body that weren't working, Joe said, what's working in your body? And I looked down and I was like, my nails are growing. Oh my God. There are things that are working. So make sure that in this, all this, these processes that you are focused on the good. Fo I don't care. You can call yourself a Pollyanna person or whatever, but that is what does it. If you're immersed in the dark side, that's what you're going to get. So the fourth thing, of, or the fourth thing, I really, and there are many that I want to talk about again, is intuition and connection. If you are not connected to your source, if you are not listening to and following those inspired hits, it is one of those games where you are going to be looking for and trying to figure out what to do endlessly. And Della, I know you've been there. I've been there. <laughs> You know, even trying to build my business, it was like for the first couple of years, I hated doing the technical stuff and I was trying to figure it out. I was in my own way. And so intuition is an incredibly important piece. And all I can say is that I was, I was always very intuitive. But one day I took my daughter to her, ba uh, her, a woman who was teaching her math. I took her to her house and they lived in a big area with lots of huge yards, you know, acres between. And she had gone every week. Well, for whatever reason, I had this hit that the woman wasn't home. And I thought, well, she would have called me if she wasn't home. And so I dropped my daughter at the door. And I thought, well, she'll, she'll be okay. And I left. An hour later, my daughter, my daughter had walked around the entire neighborhood. And at that time, there was a girl, and I can't remember her name. Her last name was Van Damme. She was, she was kidnapped in our area and murdered. And she was my daughter's age. And when I got the call from my daughter, I just bawled because I thought something could have happened to her. If I would have just listened to my knowing and called the woman and said, are you home? What's going on? Or if I would have sat there and waited, I would have known it. So don't allow a situation to have to come forward where you're not paying attention. And then you have to experience that. 
start listening to that voice because it's always right and it's always guiding you. It's always right, isn't it? Yep. Um, and it's sometimes, sometimes, you know, you're driving and you're going somewhere and you're used to going to the same way. And then all, all of a sudden at the light, you get this thing, you know, just this, this tiny little push. Uh, maybe I should go straight. And, um, you know, and you start questioning yourself. Yeah. I've tried this so many times. Lisa, <laughs> and it always works. You're so right. That, that inner voice is always right. If we can just learn to listen to it, hear it, trust it, and um, uh, ah, so good. Uh, Muhammad says, you are mentioning spirituality <laughs> yep. <laughs> in a big way, mm -hmm. in a big way. Yeah. Um, thank you. Uh, so I want to, and you said there are so many more, and you help people with, um, with them all the time because you are a resilience coach. Uh, and so I want to make sure that we let people know how they can uh, get in touch with you. And so they people can find you on your website uh, at lisaawinston.com. Uh, and um, you're also a, a host of a TV show uh, called, and I want to make sure that we show that as well so people can see that as well, um, mindsetresettv.com. And so uh, when how did you start this? I, I want to just quickly ask you. I'm just nosy. All intuition. When I met Joe, this and Joe, even Joe and I didn't know each other for like, we didn't follow each other for a year. You know, I, I interviewed him for a summit of mine. And then nine oh. months later, you know, he followed me because we had really great energy together, but that's it. We were both living our lives. And um, he saw that I, I started working with a coach in San Antonio, uh, which was really bizarre because I, I just, that was one of those hits. I was just following this, you know, this this pattern you were in California and Joe was yeah. in Texas. Well, I would just, yeah, I would just drive. I would just fly to Texas every couple months to work with this group of people and this coach. And, and I didn't know Joe was in Texas either. I, I really didn't. And so anyway, eventually we had dinner, we got together. This was all part of the intuitive guidance, the intuitive hits, everything that happened. It was one of those things where I, I have, I couldn't, I could tell you so many crazy stories of things I took, actions I took, even when I got the hit that my mother needed me, I needed to go back to live with her. And I'd just seen her, she was like 86 or 87. And I got from the university, you need to pack up your stuff and you need to go live with your mom in Pennsylvania. And so I got in my car, I drove to Pennsylvania and en route, my sister called me to tell me that my mom was diagnosed with stage four breast cancer and was dying. So if I wouldn't have listened even though it made no sense and it almost seemed impossible, I would have missed out those months with my mom. I There's so many things that you're missing out on because you're not following your inspiration and your, your intuitive guidance. Yes. And I mean, those are just those little hits. Oh, maybe you should move to San Diego. Oh, you know, maybe you should talk to this person. Hmm. And so Mindset Reset TV came about? In that period. When I was with Joe, uh, um, well, I was before I was with Joe, I was actually being mentored by Joe and I was writing my book, taking care of my mom, living with her. And then all of a sudden one day I got a call from my friend, Robert Clancy. And he said, guess what? We just you know, had a network that, that's dropped in our lap. We, we want to, you know, we're going to do a show. I mean, I literally had all these things just coming in because I was so aligned in that time frame. You know, I was really in, in high vibes and things were just falling in my lap. So that's how that happens. Yeah. Um, so this show is uh, airs uh, all the time and, and millions and millions of people are watching it from all over the world. And so um, how do you think your experiences with um, building resilience have, are, are helping you uh, making this show so successful? Well, the show's taking a little hiatus because, you know, I was sick and then my co-host actually went through a divorce after 30 years and moved to California. So um, it's, you know, everything that I do, like I said, I'm still in training. I am absolutely in training every day. I mean, um, it just, every experience I have gives me the opportunity to either say yes to it and move in, jump in, even when I don't know how or why or anything, or I can be in resistance to it and just say, you know, that doesn't sound right. Or how am I going to do that? So again, this whole thing about resilience is jumping in and saying yes, even when you don't know how. Because what do we say? That the how-tos are for the universe to figure out, not for us. We're just supposed to jump in and do it. Yes. And so, um, you know, I'm building resilience. I still have some bumps in the road here and there. 
but I am trying to be more flexible and adaptable. And um, like I said, manage your energy also. Do some Qigong energy uh, exercises, alternate, do some things to calm your nervous system down because a lot of times we don't even realize that we're reacting to everything. And that's before the mind kicks in. It's kind of a body response and then we go into fear. So manage yourself in every way. Um, thank you. You have a gift for the audience and I want to make sure yes. we get that. <laughs> so uh, what is it and how can people get it? Well, it's just a sneak peek into my book, which is behind here, Your Turning Point. And um, it's the forward and the first two chapters. Um, it's also on Kindle for 99 cents if you just want to read the whole thing. I like having a physical book. But um, you can just get an idea of my journey, my ride, which was crazy. And um, like I said, that's it was really important for me to write that. That's kind of old energy because things have shifted again, but it was a really important piece of my journey. And I think it'll really help you depending on where you are. So just go to uh, www.lisawinston.com slash free hyphen gift. And that should take you. You can also go to my website and it's on my author page as well. So. Perfect. So I have your website scrolling uh, right now at the bottom of the screen, lisaawinston.com. If you go there and uh, check out um, uh, the author, you said the author uh, <laughs> page, and then you'll you'll be able to download um, the forward and the two first chapters of Lisa's book. And uh, hopefully you'll love it so much that you want to order the whole thing and read the whole thing. Um, Lisa, thank you so much for being here today. Della, you are just a joy. You are a love. I love your energy. You're a bright light. And I love what you're doing. And thank you so much again for including me in this show and letting me share my gift, you know, my mission. That's what I love. You're helping people share their mission with the world. And yes. it's really important. So it's nice to have a platform to do that. Thank you. And uh, I really, really appreciate everything you talked about today. And um, but I do want to give you a couple of more minutes to leave us with whatever you like. Mm -hmm. And uh, so go ahead, please. I think the most important thing that I want to say is that you are more courageous than you know, you're you are more strong than you know, you know, Joe, when, when Joe and I did our interview, one of the biggest things that stood out to me and has now become one of my themes as well is that you are the miracle. This is the miracle. This moment we're in is a miracle. I always like to say everything seems so big and overwhelming, but we're living on a ball in outer space that revolves. You know, we have a heart that breathes without a battery and we have lungs, or, you know, that beats without a battery and lungs that breathe without us doing anything. So um, tap into that because that's the truth of it. And that'll raise your vibes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You have a beautiful smile, Lisa. Thank you so much for being here today. I want to uh, send an appreciation to the viewers who was, who've been watching us and who've uh, stayed with us for the whole hour for your comments, for the love you sent. Thank you very much. If you found this interview helpful, um, send it to someone else that you think might benefit from this because, uh, you know, the messages you hear, uh, they're not coincidental. I think they they happen for a reason. And so um, share it with other people. Pay it forward, uh, will you? Thank you. And so uh, once again, I want to thank you for being here, Lisa. And I uh, hope to see you very soon again on the show. I would love to have you back on and just you know, get more, get more out of you, squeeze more out of you. Energy girl. Anytime. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. And Thank so uh, for everyone who's been watching us today, thank you again. Uh, until next time, this has been Della's voice hoping to spark your soul.